everyone welcome to another episode of all about cars where we're going to be talking about all the upcoming cars of 2021 now last week we did uh, all the upcoming suvs of 2021 so do check out that video and now we're going to be talking about uh, hatchbacks sedans and uh, the electric vehicles all right let's start with the hatchbacks first and uh, the first car in our list is the maruti suzuki celerio now, uh, it's been around for a long time. You've got the Celerio, you've got the other way into Celerio X. Right. But then it's starting to get a little long in the tooth. I would say so, yeah. I think it started off also on a very, uh, I don't know, slow footing because the car uh, never seemed like a, a proposition that you'd want to go for. It didn't seem expensive. It just seemed like a very utilitarian car. And most of the sales I think we saw came from the taxi market. So uh, this is what, a new generation car altogether? Uh, yes, yeah. so we uh, expect this car to be on the new hard tech platform. Okay, and so lighter and uh, yes. better built and yes. all that sense. So uh, let's hope uh, Maruti can do something about the styling, make it a little right. more desirable inside and outside. Right. Uh, because otherwise it's a, it's a pretty practical car, lots of space, uh, decent boot and uh, not too bad to drive either. Right. So, uh, like I said, it's going to be on the new hard tech platform and we expect the new 1.2 litre engine also to make way in it. Right. And uh, as you can expect, it'll be larger, it'll have more room and it'll get the new infotainment system. Correct. So, it should be a, a much updated car as compared to the current car. Yeah. And in terms of drivetrain, I think it'll still stick with the petrol and manual and AMG, right. I would believe. Yeah. So, that's uh, the new scenario right. for you. And yeah. uh, we expect it to be launched by... Uh, uh, the mid of two, 2021. All right, so uh, about June, thereabouts? June should be it. Right. Okay. All right, uh, let's move on to the next car. Uh, it's a kind of a favorite here, the new Maruti Suzuki Swift. So we still lift. So lots of Marutis, I guess, this year in terms of hatchbacks. Yeah. So again, uh, the Swift, uh, it's pretty much updated. This is a, a whole new generation anyways. Yeah. So we can't expect too many changes. Maybe a few headlight changes, new bumper changes, fresher interiors. Um, I guess uh, the new launch should be again around April, May. Yeah, so I guess uh, facelifts in any case, uh, you don't want to change the sheet metal work on the car because it just uh, ruins the cost equation. So I think like uh, Abhishek said, there would be some uh, revisions on the headlight, maybe uh, the internals might be different. Same for the tail lamps, a little uh, spruced up interiors. Uh, it's a good car overall to drive and to own in terms of ownership, everything. So I think uh, a little uh, Botox would do it good. Right. And uh, let's see what comes out. And uh, we're talking about uh, the Skoda Octavia. This is Again. the fourth gen car. Yeah. Good driver's car, always has been. And I think the new one should be too. Yes. So like I said uh, earlier, I think Skoda likes to give diesel options in uh, the higher segment, so Skoda might get the diesel, or you already have the two-liter petrol. Yeah, I think I think uh, the way uh, the VW Group is going this year, maybe we won't see a diesel. You know, we're not seeing a diesel in the likes right. of uh, even the Kodiak or SUVs. So chances are that uh, they would probably want to stick with petrol. I mean, people are right. moving to petrol. So, right. So. right. But yeah, diesel uh, has always been a strong thing for Octavias, right? Right. But let's see how that goes. So again, uh, this car was supposed to be launched uh, earlier, but it was delayed due to the pandemic. So we expect it to be here around Feb, March. And uh, prices should start at 20 plus lakhs. Wow. Premium so, on the premium side. So pretty expensive. Superb is up now. Uh, starts from 30 plus. plus. So I guess now this sits in the 20 to 30 uh, bracket. Right. Expensive, but yeah, a good car nonetheless. Right. Next car is what people call probably the best car in the world. The S-Class. <laughs> so they've uh, just uh, unveiled the new S-Class probably about four or five months ago. Right. It's the W223. And... Uh, I never get the nomenclature, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, like every new S-Class, it's just a huge step ahead. Right. Uh, lots of safety, lots of autonomous technology. Uh, plenty of uh, powerful engine options and, of course, excellent, a uh, lot of luxury as well. So, and, and like uh, all, uh, or like previous S-Classes, I think it would be assembled in India. Yes. Uh, at least some versions will be. Some versions will come as CBUs. Right. Um, given Mercedes's uh, take, you will probably see a launch edition at the start. CBUs, all the bells and whistles when it comes out. And then, of course, a uh, lesser spec version would start then right. they would start assembling. So India yeah. will get uh, the L uh, long wheelbase version only. Has to, yeah. 
and uh, you'll get diesel and petrol options with the cars. So. Yeah, and always uh, great to look forward to the S-Class because suddenly um, there's a new uh, thing to experience in cars which eventually translates or goes down to other things but uh, you read about it but to experience is, is uh, a big thing so right. we're really looking forward to the new S-Class. And we can expect it somewhere around uh, the second half of 2021. Right. All right, another Mercedes in the list and this is the E-Class facelift. Now, this is not going to be a significant change. Uh, they've uh, redone uh, the interiors a bit. You've right. got uh, a new console at the back, uh, a few more uh, features added. And of course, like in most facelifts, you get a redesigned headlight, redesigned bumpers. But by and large, it's going to be the same car. Right. Same so, engine, same power trip. So, so you're still going to have the long wheelbase version. Yes. Um, yes. To some eyes, it's not. Uh, it doesn't fit well. But it's something that, uh, as Indians, we've accepted well. And that's why we're seeing uh, other uh, luxury car makers uh, do the same right. and going for long wheelbase version. So Mercedes has got the E, they've got the S, they've got what the GLE, right. all of these in long wheelbase versions. So, um, and E-Class is a good seller right. for Mercedes. Right. So, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, the next Mercedes on the list is an important one. Yes. It's the new A-Class sedan. Yes, and it's not the CLA that we're used to or that we've seen, it is the A-Class limousine. And the big difference is the roof line. So it's got a flattish roof line, right. which means more headroom. It might not look as attractive as the CLA, right. but hey, it's more practical. Right. I think uh, we saw the AMG version at the Auto Expo. That's correct. But uh, they're going to bring in the standard engines uh, pretty soon with the new A-Class. Yeah, and uh, goes up against what, the likes of uh, the 2 Series, right. Grand Coupe. Right. And uh, uh, there is no A3, A3 from yeah. Audi but right now. But it will be but coming in yeah, later so on. So when it does. But yeah, uh, it's a good entry level car if you want to get into uh, luxury. I think. Uh, uh, the A-Class limousine should be a good fit. Right. So our next car is something that Vikrant uh, just gave us news about. It's the Volkswagen Arteon. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's not confirmed as yet, but uh, chances are, or, or at least Volkswagen is uh, considering launching this car. It will, of course, come via the, the non-homologation CBU route. The whole Volkswagen group uh, has the option, I think, about 2,500 units to bring in without uh, this, and they're going to do that for the T Rock, they're going to do that for the uh, All Space, right. and they might also do it for the uh, Arteon or, or uh, Arteon, yeah. uh, how you spell it. Uh, it's going to sit above the Passat or where the Passat was. It's a much nicer looking car, it's more sporty, stylish, yeah. Yeah, sporty, and it has more tech. Right. So it would probably just be like a tech showcase, and uh, VW wants to bridge a gap, right? You've got, uh, they want people to keep moving up and staying in the VW family. Right. So this is what uh, they might uh, bring in. Uh, and if they do, it should be uh, a, a really interesting drive because it's gonna come with a two liter petrol engine, right. almost 250 horsepower. Right. Uh, also available with four wheel drive uh, or all wheel drive internationally, but of course we don't need that. So we'll get the front wheel drive. Right. So that's something that uh, should be worth looking for. All right, let's uh, move on to the next car. It's the Skoda Rapid Replacement. Now, according to Skoda, it's going to replace the Rapid completely and it's going to be slightly larger. Okay. And of course, you can expect uh, the same uh, one liter engine in it with uh, the DSG options, uh, or DSG options and the torque converter. And we expect it to be coming in uh, sometime uh, in the end of, towards the end of the year. Yeah, so it will follow the Kushak and it is based on the similar platform. Uh, MQB A0 IN, so similar drivetrain options. I'm not sure whether it will come with that 1.5 direct injection petrol. Unlikely. Yeah, but uh, even the one liter we've seen, it's it's, it's a good fit. It's okay, it's and uh, yeah, uh, it might not be called the Rapid. Is uh, is also a possibility. Right. So maybe what the current Rapid will exist alongside this new car, so it'll automatically be more expensive. So right. they're just trying to cover as many bases as possible. Right. But let's see. That's towards the end of the year. Right. Okay, we now move on to the EVs. The future. The future of automobiles, sadly. <laughs> All right, the first on the list is uh, something that's uh, become a phenom uh, internationally. Yeah. It's the Porsche Taycan. Taycan, Taycan, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I think uh, it's shockingly fast. Right. It's shockingly entertaining is what we've also read. We've not driven the car. Right. And uh, it's got a decent range uh, it on its side too. It but of course, like every EV, when it comes to India, it will be 
it'll be i think this Un- one will be attainable right Super and upwards expensive. of a crore so yeah crores two crores maybe Two so, crores, maybe. Yeah, right. So super expensive, but um, but it again, is, it's like uh, if you wanted a Porsche and you wanted to save the planet as well, there you have it. Yeah, nice. Uh, next on the list is the Jaguar I Pace. I think it was just uh, recently unveiled. Yeah, new I Pace. It's not a. It's not as uh, exotic to look at as the Porsche, of course. Of course. Uh, it looks more like a. hatchback mpv sort of a thing right but again uh, given an ev it'll still be over a crore plus right and what cbu cbu uh, but i guess every manufacturer uh, needs to have at least one right. ev in their lineup again most like a like a showcase uh, vehicle so yeah. yeah uh the other vehicle here is something that we've heard of uh, since quite a while now it's the audi e-tron yeah we also done a video on it uh, as a like a standing showcase of the car uh quite some time back it was supposed to come in again very expensive right. and uh, but it's still not launched so hopefully this year right. next on the list is something more mainstream and something that we've driven it's the Hyundai Kona basically a new generation Hyundai Kona we've driven it extensively hopefully we'll drive the new car as well uh, expected to have a longer range yeah. expected to be more comfortable more practical Uh, considering you have so many EVs now, yeah. so I think uh, the new Kona will up the game. But this year, I think is going to be uh, a big step up, or at least a step up for EVs. Uh, it'll need to be if uh, EVs uh, need to have a, a future in the right. in the short term and the mid term. Right. Uh, we'll need uh, affordable EVs. I think we've already seen that with the Tata Nexon. Nexon. There should be something more from Tata. There should be something from uh, Maruti. Right. And then uh, you're uh, making it available to more people. More people can afford it. Then of course the infrastructure. Right. So if uh, government and we're seeing some of the state governments do this, that they're uh, incentivizing uh, private operators to set up the infrastructure. Uh, if that happens, then of course it becomes easier. Right. Right now I think we've got a Nexon uh, EV uh, on test and. Uh, right. Uh, we can charge it for free at the Tata dealership. Dealership, yeah, and it charges like eighty percent in one hour, right. which is like I don't know three cups of coffee. It's right. so not too bad. So I think the things are there. Uh, they just need to be a little uh, more streamlined, and we could see EV making a strong presence. Right. Yeah. So that was it about uh, EVs. And that's a wrap on all about cars. Uh, we've uh, told you about over thirty cars that are going to be launched in twenty twenty one. So clearly, we're on a revival path. Uh, uh dealers don't have enough stocks uh, there's a lot of demand so clearly uh, we are coming back as an industry uh, and uh, i think uh, the number of launches that you've seen now or the number of launches that will happen this year clearly indicate that so uh, we'll see you next week thank you so much for watching and uh, subscribe like and comment thank you